our project is centered around these experimental design chalk talks that we've incorporated in our um, introductory molecular biology class for graduate students at Harvard Medical School. And we've looked at the effect of these chalk talks in a few different ways, um, both looking at video recordings of students in their first and second times doing these chalk talks during the course, as well as um, written answers to experimental design questions throughout the course. We've also been looking at and thinking about how um, this affects students' confidence or self-efficacy with the skills of science communication and experimental design and how that changes from the beginning and to the end of the semester. We've also been developing some resources for um, training students in how to do experimental design and chalk talks. So a chalk talk <laughs> is literally talking with chalk. Um, and so what it is, it's very different from a type of presentation that we see a lot with our trainees, is that we do a good job of teaching presentations using PowerPoint in the background. But in this case, they don't have PowerPoint, right? So they actually have to do an unscripted talk. Well, they script it, but they do it in an unstructured way at the board. Um, and they walk through an experimental protocol. What's different than sort of what you see with a presentation in general is that it's built to be interrupted. And a lot of times the conversation goes where the audience wants you to go. Um, and thinking about how you sort of craft a narrative while actually interacting with the audience. Um, it's used at multiple different stages. Mm -hmm. We know that faculty are typically asked to do it um, as part of their job interview. Along with a seminar, they have to do a chat talk. A lot of trainees don't know that. But we've also seen instances at multiple places where some postdocs are asked to do it as part of their interview. We know that graduate students use it in their pre-qualifying exams um, for many of our programs. So we're kind of training them for something that they'll see in the second year. And I've actually heard of instances now where graduate students are being interviewed for graduate school using a chat talk. One of the things we found working with our students is sort of, so we've taught, we talk about experimental design a lot, that that's what you get out of graduate school. But we actually don't do a lot of formal training in experimental design, that's a deficiency that we saw. And we tried to address that in our life sciences graduate course by actually trying to intervene, teach some skills in experimental design, teach some skills in science communication, and then force students to actually put that into practice through the types of assessments that we use. So when we talk about teaching experimental design and how to do a chat talk, we do them together. And we've developed a series of resources, including videos. So we have sample questions that we show students, this is what the assessment will look like in our course. Then we have videos that we've developed, um, a good version of what our response would look like and a great version of what our response would look like. Um, and actually put those on display for the students along with an annotated guide that tells them this is what a good, this is what a great chat talk looks like, and this is what gets you to a high score using a novel rubric that we've developed. So the students get sample question, sample presentations, and a rubric with an annotated guide that tells you how to excel at that rubric. And the last piece that we're finishing up with our project is actually trying to make animated movies to explain this so that that actually accompanies it too. We're at the, po the point now, I think one of the nice outcomes from this whole project is that we've lined up a pretty robust set of papers that we're developing as outcomes from the project. Mm -hmm. And we're actually spanning back now, we're at, we're at a point where we're analyzing data for 10 years. And so this chat talk was actually introduced in this class in 2009, the very first time that it was done. And then 2010, it was mod modified, and we've gradually modified it to the point where it's been pretty consistent for the last four years what it looks like. But the idea was simply we had a standard molecular biology class. The person who was very involved at the time was Johanna Gutlerner. She was a curriculum fellow in the course. She preceded me as a curriculum fellow, and I preceded Madhvi as a curriculum fellow. Um, she thought we should find a way, working with the faculty, the faculty in the class also, um, to make the class more interactive. And actually to focus on skills, which at the time was sort of an out there idea for life sciences graduate education, right? Everybody said you come to graduate schools to learn all the mechanisms and the details. And they were talking about trying to introduce skills. Flash forward to fast forward to 10 years now, um, that's what everybody's talking about in grad ed, that we need to focus on skills and it's not just an undergraduate thing. So it's taken on a life, um, I think, a value in that respect. So we worked it into the course as an assessment. And I think the, the driving force behind it was watching the student feedback on the course evaluations, which told us that students liked it. And what we learned was to use the feedback in a way to continuously address the problems they had with the assessment to the point where it's consistently been one of the strongest positives in the class. One of the outcomes from our project is all the data analysis we've done on course evals. 
consistently positive. Um, and another thing that we've seen is when we ask students years after they've left the class, what was the lasting learning outcome from the course? It's actually the exercise and being able to apply that skill in multiple different settings. Really enjoyed working with the students and I think um, for me it wasn't, they weren't just workers, they were also collaborators in the project and I think it was really important to involve them in that way. And I think also just kind of the, the breadth of things we were able to look at um, related to experimental design chalk talks and the different types of outcomes, I think that was really valuable to have that breadth. And I think that the grant really enabled us to have kind of a broader view of it instead of just looking at an individual part. One of the things that's very nice about the SPART grants in particular is that when you need a relatively robust amount of money, but not an immense amount of money, like an NSF grant or an NIH grant, it's enough money to get a good amount of projects done and get research done, and it really helped with us being able to engage students. So this project really benefited from the fact that we have six students who are helping with the project. And I mean, one of the projects literally entailed transcribing 500 rubrics um, for multiple years, right? And two students did that. And so that type of work is not something that it's really easy to justify for a big grant, but it's a starting point to actually get the work done. And what we've been able to do is do that, right? So a lot of that engaging students who have different expertise, like our biostatisticians to help us with analysis. So I think the student engagement part of actually has been a really important outcome of having the funding.